Hi, hi, back again. This is Dividing Sight, uh, take 11. Now, um, we've gone through quite a bit now. We've gone through the 25 cards of the Major Arcan, because we're including the Trinity, where there's normally 22 cards to every tarot card deck that you see out, out in, um, out for sale. Um, the 56 cards of the Minor Arcan, okay, so all of these cards describe um, people's personality types. We've gone to the nine categories of your personality. Recognition, authority, success, work, uh, mystical, community, luck, obstacles, and energy. Um, we've um, seen the, the, the different strengths of each one of these um, um, categories. Now, um, I was watching the movie National Treasures the other day, and they have the American dollar bill. And what they focused in on was the all-seeing eye. But they didn't focus in on the opposite side of the American dollar bill. Which, if you understand the representation of the suits, shows you how that ego is holding the four suits of the tarot in, in, in grasping them in his talents. And, yeah. So now, we're going we're gonna to do a little, bit of, a little bit of revealing of some more secrets of the tarot. Where the merchants um, are, are um, the merchants are the diamonds, and diamonds is the money, the pentacles, the coins, and that's represented by the 13 uh, stars above the head of the eagle. Those are your, that's, that's your money. So money's right on top. So you can see where the Americans feel um, their, their influence with money. Number one. And now we go down to the stripes on the chest of the eagle in this little depiction here. And now in the olden days, they had the barber pole, okay? And the barber pole was for letting the blood as the barber was the doctors way back when. And they would bleed you and uh, they would cut your hair. Uh, the barbers were the physicians. They were the people in charge of your health. And that's represented by the 13 stripes um, on uh, the symbolism. Because if you look at a, a, a true barber's pole, and you look at it, there's 13 red and white stripes. Now, the rest of it is really cool. So that, that, that would be hearts, right? 13 stripes. And hearts would be cups in the tarot. Now, on the uh, one side of the claw, or the talon, there's 13 arrows. <laughs> well, that's obvious, that's your swords, okay? That's your army. And, and, and they're, they're in the, one of the, the most deadliest, strongest grip there, the talons of the eagle. Uh, now, there's 13 of them, representing each one card of each suit. Now, on the opposite talon, there's um, 13 leaves and there's 13 berries. And these would represent the farmers growing the crops, tending the flocks, okay? Now, at the bottom of that, this eagle is showing nine feathers, okay? The nine feathers, that also represents the numerical influence of the tarot, um, the, the value of from one to nine. I thought that was quite interesting. I'd just like to share that with you. Um, it's pretty cool. So, I'd like to know who designed this and why they why they put the eagle in there because it's in a circle, which which represents the the, the god the Ra, the influence of um, the benefit of uh, life, the giver of life. Um, that's on the American one dollar bill. So now, 
let's see. I thought it was going to take a little bit longer than that. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so now, the rest of the session is going to um, how um, the design of the, pyra of the pyramid was generated. Now, we're going to draw our, our, our fancy pyramid again, okay? And there goes, we'll find that point down to here. We'll go across to here and come back up to there. Now, there's a 52 degree incline on the pyramid. But just by chance, half of that, if we were to divide this right in half, there's a grand gallery inside, and it is on half of the slope of the pyramid, of 26 degrees. 26, give or take a little bit. Because it's not truly 52 degrees. So, that means halfway up the pyramid, and remember this is 13 acres, this is, this is a big um, plot of land to work on. 13 acres. So now we have the the, um, the, uh, the Queen's Chamber, would be about here, subterranean chambers way down here, okay, goes to an entrance, goes to the outside, where this is, remember, it's 54, the opening to the pyramid is 54 feet above the base of the pyramid. So now, we have what they call the Grand Gallery. I'm going to draw this in detail later, which goes, there's the Grand Gallery, which goes to the King's Chamber. Okay? It's not too bad for him. And you got the King's Chamber with the coffer inside there. Now, this is this is really uh, an amazing feat of uh, amazing feat of architecture when they drew this because I still believe that there is another hidden chamber in the pyramid. So now, if you were to take the slope of the uh, grand uh, of the, of the slope in the, in the grand gallery going up the pyramid, which is 26 degree incline, and it's the same, it's the same with the, uh, the one that's going down to the subterranean chamber, it's also 26 degree incline. But that's half of the distance between um, one side of the pyramid, because remember this side is 52 degrees, and half of that is 26 degrees, which would give you half the height of the pyramid if you were to build your pyramid and use the Grand Gallery as a ramp going up to the opposite side. So half of 480 feet is 240 feet. So you're right here, you're 240 feet above the, the plane, 240 feet above the, um, the base of the pyramid, halfway up. Now, this 26 degrees um, in, in, uh, Uh, their compass, their, their royal compass, would only would only be measured as six degree incline, six. And six degree incline for pulling up these these uh, two and a half ton blocks was a little heavy, especially when you're 240 feet straight up. So the secondary influence, and and people are right on how they built the pyramids. It wasn't levitation; it was just it was just brute force. Um, they would they would. Uh, 240 feet, they would go around the pyramid on a ramp. So, but the ramp then would only be 22 degrees high, 22 on an incline, and they'd do it back and forth. It's the same as like when an ant builds their house, their home on the ground. They come up from the ground and they, and they drop their stuff over the side, and that gives you the cone of the ramp's entrance, okay? Um, Gotta cut this one out and I'll be right back in a second.